DK right here, he's at 32 yards. I can't believe it, man. He's so pumped. is over that DK buck you know he popped out early he's broken his g3 he broke a brow just big frame deer Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Midwest Whitetail. We greatly appreciate you taking the time to join us today, November 13th, smack dab in the middle of the rut, and I hope you guys have had some great hunts of your own. Going back to last week, we did the two episodes, starting with Owen Riegler's decoy hunt action. Caleb gave us an update on that lucky deer. And then moving towards the end of the week, we released two more kills in the form of Zach Rosmus's awesome deer here in Iowa. And then Aiden Epperson had a great show down there with a big Missouri eight pointer. So for everybody who took the time to watch those shows, thank you so much for leaving the comments of positivity. And as promised on this week's episode, we're joining Mike Reed there at the river farm for the story of DK. It's an awesome deer. And for those of you that have followed along, it's one that has a long history on that property. And a couple of talking points, if you go back to the 2022 season, DK was not a buck that called the river farm home. He was one that ranged through and one of the points to me that sticks out is the amount of deer that hit the ground on the river farm in 2022 certainly played a role in how things unfolded in 23. If you look back, I mean, Mike is one of the most gracious landowners and multiple people were able to harvest bucks on the river property. He got his family involved, had the story of Kelsey and Poseidon, and definitely it made an impact as far as 23 DK's range. So that's what we're gonna dive into on this week's episode. You know, ever since Mike found that shed, we were all super excited to see how things played out. It couldn't have played out in a better fashion and we couldn't be happier for you, Mike. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. And in the coming weeks, we've got Drake Lamb's big eight pointer next week. And then might have to give you guys a quick sneak peek, but Mike Reed is officially tagged out. So the train just keeps rolling on. And without you guys, none of this is possible. So again, thank you so much. Let's jump into the episode and hope you guys enjoy it. Boom. <laughs> It's Sunday, February 26th, and we're down here at the River Bottom Farm. Got a crew of friends and family out here doing a little shed hunting. It's a beautiful day, mid 40s, getting into the low 50s today. And we're out here, uh, primary deer we're looking for is DK. Just getting the pinch, we're gonna hit the peninsula and uh, hopefully pick up some antlers. An old one? How many years old is that one, you think? Yeah. That's Bella's buck she shot in youth season. <laughs> well, it's Monday, April 10th, and me and some of the guys are down here at the River Bottom Farm getting some of this burning done. Just gonna light one spot at a time and just keep control of each edge and try to get some of these areas knocked out. DK 
Okay. We're super stoked to pick up this antler. Decided to come get one more little pocket burn with the last 20 minutes of light. Came and lit it up. And uh, lo and behold, the main set of antlers we're looking to find ended up finding DK's left side. You guys saw we encountered him and passed him late season when I decided to shoot Kelsey. This guy's gonna be my number one target this year. Hopefully we can find the other side. to eat your ice cream cake later. Yep. <laughs> Let's see here. Reminiscent of a uh, crab claw. With that. And his tips are very bulbous. He's got some growing left. Well, we're down here at the river bottom farm today. Gonna work on getting our brassica plots in, but before we do that, we're running around the farm pulling cards, uh, hoping DK shows up. But there's a few bucks where I wasn't sure early if they were DK or not, and you know, quite a few with potential out here this year. So excited to go around and pull the cards. Let's go see if DK's on this one. That's DK. Holy moly. That's him. See, I figured it once we saw him. Like, <laughs> like, that's him. Dang. Holy moly. That's 100% him. This is what? This is last night. This is last night. This is definitely his frame. I, I mean, it's definitely him. Beautiful. Big 10. Split brows. Exciting to see him. We're at the north plot. And we've had a lot of success over the years here. It's about a one acre plot that we usually have in Brassicas. And we've got our Monster Buck Brassica blend here. It's got uh, radishes, turnips, kale, and rape in it. It's my first year doing no-till methods for the Brassicas. I'm excited to see how it turns out. This is um, gonna be one of our, for sure, spots to target DK. You know, he, he spends his time on this end of the farm and uh, just trying to make sure that we have our options all laid out. We've got beans in the ground. Obviously, we'll be hunting them in the pinch. The rut will be a little bit different than other times of year, but. This is a spot that he hangs out quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to this being a good food plot for us. p.m. on Thursday, October 5th, and it's my first official set of the year. We slipped out to this redneck blind on this uh, brassica plot. Ry pulled this in here about a week ago, and uh, I'm hoping to get a look at DK tonight. He's been around. He's not daylighting anywhere, but it's one of those situations where you get this a good cool front in uh, early October. It might be that night that he does daylight. He's been the most active on a small clover plot we have, but he's definitely been on this plot as uh, the second most visited area as far as cameras go. Nice cool front, pressure's on the rise. Hopefully DK makes an appearance. Friday, October 6th, we are back out, actually in the same blind we were in yesterday. This front has pushed through really strong northwest wind. I've talked about this before, I'm not super confident that it would kill him early, but you never know. I think as all the corn comes out and 
there's more pressure surrounding the area that he's going to move more into the farm at least that's what i'm hoping so i think our best chance at getting is going to be end of october but uh you never know we'll see who shows up We gotta love those high anticipation hunts. I mean, the entire time we're sitting there on pins and needles just waiting for them to step out at any minute. Uh, it's not an area that we typically see a lot of deer, but with that standing corn right there, you know, this gives them a lot of cover and protection. We've got acorns, we've got a white oak that's dropping there, we've got the clover. It's just, it's working out this year to be a nice little early season spot. And with him there last night with 10 minutes to go, it was like, I uh, just, man, as the minutes were ticking by, I thought for sure he was gonna step out, but. I'm heading out of town to Utah for my brother's wedding, so I won't be back out here probably till at least next Monday. So we'll check in with you guys then. October 21st, first morning sit for me down here at the River Bottom Farm. And we're about an hour and a half into the hunt and uh, it's our first opportunity to actually do an interview. We've had steady deer movement. Let's see, we've seen, I think, eight or nine does and seven bucks or so, and three of them, I would say, are four or older. One of them's a great younger deer. He's a three, four, I kind of think he's a four-year-old. And then that moss buck, I have met four this year. He also was nudging does around. This pinch is just a great setup for, we've got all the bedding back in the peninsula and then the ag fields off to the north. We approach it at a perpendicular angle and just every morning these deer filter through here. And this year we have a great acorn crop in here. And so a lot of the does just, they mill around and feed right here. And so it's a, 
It's a little social area. I like what I'm seeing so far this morning. October 25th, Wednesday. First morning of my vacation start here. We're down here at the River Bottom Farm. We're at the head of the slough. We're at the neck of the peninsula. The peninsula's a big giant bedding area. Decay's actually been on both sides, so we're really in the chips, I think, despite the less than ideal conditions. High anticipation, I'm excited. We'll see if we can lay eyes on them. stuff right there that's that buck we call moss I mean super cool deer I just love those tall brows got the drop tine he's got great mass already another thing I haven't talked a whole lot about is uh, like DK being not in, in the farm a ton last year but we took five bucks off of this 560 acres last year all five or older you know, we create that void you hope were deer feel like they want to move in here. And so I'd like to think that that made a difference, helping us out, getting them to come in here more. Hopefully we can have a good time chasing them here over the next couple weeks. It's a little after nine o'clock and we have had non-stop movement for the last two hours. Probably 20 does and fawns and nine or 10 one and a half year old bucks. They've been feeding on these acorns around us just all morning. And the little bucks are just grunting and chasing and pushing deer around. So it's fun. Hopefully we get a mature buck to come through here. We just pulled up to the river farm and uh, we're gonna head back in the pinch. Feels nice and cool today. It's, I think with the wind about 29 degrees, straight north wind. Another front's coming through. We might get some snow today. So um, we're gonna get in there and hopefully DK shows up.
pretty awesome start to the morning so far. It's awesome to see moss again. And then Joey B, big beautiful three-year-old, wasn't too far behind them. They actually came from opposite directions, but they all sort of met right here. Hopefully DK's somewhere in the area. I'd like to think if he was close by and heard all that ruckus, he would have come check it out, but he doesn't seem to be an overly aggressive deer. They're all just eating acorns in here. We got this front blowing through. Might get some snow. Hopefully DK makes an appearance yet. It is cold this morning. Real feel of 16 degrees. Feels awesome out there. We're about to head into the pinch. Ryan and I have been kind of bouncing back and forth where to go, but I feel like that's the best spot to catch up with him. And so we're gonna get in there and hopefully he shows up today. It's Monday, October 30th. High pressure, cold, crispy morning. We got a light northwest wind and the real feel is about 16 degrees. Got two little bucks uh, across the slough here in the oaks. We've already had that um, four-year-old 10 with the short G4s walk by. Got a couple does and little bucks walk under us in the moonlight when we're setting up. It feels awesome. We're back in the pinch. I put some hours in this morning. Hopefully DK shows up.
see one. It's a little bit farther out there. She's so focused. Back towards the field edge. What? Did you get on him? You were on him? I widened up and got out. Yeah, so I turned around and saw you out there pretty far. Dude. I saw blood coming out of his mouth like right away. I'm not sure what happened. Like I am shaking every <laughs> week. Dude, I I don't know. I was watching that doe. And I've got my hood on and I I'm blocked to the left. And then I, I don't know, I'm just looking around. I look at my DK right here. He's at 32 yards. The pinch strikes again, baby. Dude, it's October 30th. I kept saying, that deer lives to the north. If we sit here enough, this morning is cold. He's coming back a little bit late. I'm so pumped. What? I'm so excited. What? I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't believe it, man. I still can't believe that just happened. I don't think that's ever happened to me before where I didn't notice the deer until he was 30 yards away. The shot looked good. I mean, he wheeled all the way around running back to the north and then we saw him loop again and run up the river. And I think I, think I heard him crash down there. We went a three day stretch without getting a picture of him. And um, you know, EHD is kind of really tearing up the area and we found one of our good bucks, 180 class deer. The neighbor found him dead the other day and I found three more does dead yesterday. And I've been running that act supplement all summer. You know, we're not finding a ton of deer on this property. And Ryan and I have been talking, I think I mean, maybe that supplement's helping them. That's, that's the point of it is to keep their nourishment up and give them everything they need to hopefully fight off infection and, and thrive when there are challenges. And, uh, Sure enough, this morning, 9.20, right in the pinch. 
we talked about this a few sits ago where we took quite a few mature bucks out of here and uh, you know so there's sort of that void in here you got the a lot of does you know we had a sit the other day where we saw 20 does and as we edge our way to November I was thinking you know he's gonna spend more time in here we're gonna we're gonna have a better chance at catching up with him but um, I couldn't be more pumped October 30th got an arrow in him we're gonna get down and take a look at the blood make sure I feel good about it and then we'll pick up the trail here pretty shortly let's go get him buddy This is where he was standing. Yeah. Blood right here. <laughs> yeah, it's just full of bubbles. I love a blood trail like this. I have not seen the arrow yet. I gotta just look. He's in the river, dude. Oh my goodness. That is crazy. Well, we just found him and he went down right about where I thought he did. Unfortunately though, he rolled down into the river and he drifted down maybe 30 or 40 yards and he's caught on this log. So we're gonna head back to the house and uh, get a canoe and maybe some chest waders. I can see the bottom right here. I think it's about three feet deep. The river's down pretty bad with the uh, drought this year, but it's cold enough today. I'm not repeating what I did in the past and going for a swim, so. Um, nice thing right here too is I own both sides so we can certainly make it down there and get a look at them but we got our work cut out for us. <laughs> Dude, isn't it awesome? Congrats. Thanks buddy. That's so awesome. Super excited. Look, look at that. Look, look, look it's, it's sneezy. It's sneezy. It's sneezy. I wonder if he's got a doe there or something. We just came and launched a canoe down at this sandbar. I'm gonna paddle down to him, get him roped up, and uh, we're gonna winch him up the bank. I'll see you guys over there. I'm popping a willy. Sliding down the log. Let's get him right. Okay. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Thank you. Hey, we're still in October, guys. October. <laughs> it's crazy to think back to when he was a three-year-old eight. Yeah, go ahead. Well, of course, the saga couldn't end without a little bit of drama. Certainly made us work for it, getting him out of the river, but uh, the three of us got it done. And uh, I'm super happy with him, such a giant, typical deer. And I honestly didn't think the hunt for him would come together so quickly on our first encounter. You know, we talked about this in tree a little bit, just being that he's, he's not a real homebody. I mean, we, we've got four years of history with him, but uh, he's just not one of those deer that spends a ton of time on the farm. But over the last 10 days or so, he seemed to be creeping a little bit further in. And uh, I certainly was getting excited as each day went on, thinking that it was gonna come together. And, and lo and behold, on our first encounter in the pinch, he comes through and gives me a 20 yard shot. The story of DK it really starts back in 2020. We had him as just a big framed eight point. And uh, while we favored three, wasn't sure if he was three or four. And actually Grant, the night he killed Bob, um, had an encounter with him on the south plot. And there were a few other encounters that year. And then he was a four and a half year old, he sprouted little G4s. And he was probably on the farm the most that year. 
That was my first full year with the farm to the south. He actually busted a beam off and uh, you know we had a few encounters with him on this side of the farm and then some encounters with him farther south into the farm. Fast forward to his five and a half year old year, which all the while we're thinking he could be one year older, but we're always rounding down, favoring, just making sure he was fully mature. Last year, he just blew up into a big frame, 10 with a split G2 on the right. And unfortunately, he busted a brow off and a G3 off in September. And so I made a decision then that I'm just not gonna shoot him this year. I'm gonna focus on Kelsey and uh, we'll see what he does next year. And we had one encounter with him in the pinch. The footage is a little bit through the brush, off in the distance. He, he came just into the pinch and circled back to the north. One afternoon, we were in the north plot and saw him running the river. And then we had a couple encounters with him late season, that one really good encounter the night I killed Kelsey. And it was nice to see him. It reassured me of my decision not to hunt him last year. And then since January 10th and season end last year, he was gonna be my focus this year. And we got a couple pictures of him throughout June and throughout the summer and um, added a lot of mass. And he was my number one target. And the pattern he'd follow was similar to last year where he was only on the farm occasionally. We got very sporadic pictures of him. And I knew that he wasn't really living here as I mentioned. And then the end of August, early September, I mean, he was in the radish plot a ton, and he was in daylight. I wasn't sure that pattern would continue. I didn't think that pattern would continue. We, we made arrangements to try to get him early, move some blinds in, had stands hung, move some cameras around, and it just never came to fruition. You know, there was uh, one or two times where he was daylight, and he was on a little clover plot when we were on Nebraska plot, and, we just moved around when we could, hunting him smart and trying to buy time for this late October. And we've been having some great hunts. You know, you couldn't ask for a more timely cold front. I've said it before, my favorite time of year is this end of October. These bucks that are in the area of the neighborhood, uh, they're looking for that first available doe and they're not running miles, you know, during the rut. And so I, I I've had a lot of success this time of year, and then we time it up with this harsh cold front. I mean, it was 16 degrees this morning, and every morning we've been in the pinch when the wind's been right with high anticipation, having some great sits, some great pre-rut activity, and just every night, you know, another day goes by where we hadn't seen him, and I was like, any day now, any day now. Well, moving forward, a lot of the team members still have tags in their pockets, and we're really looking forward to sweet November. Super blessed and grateful to have so much success here before we even get to November. As always, we appreciate you guys watching. Good luck if you're out there hunting. Stay safe, and we'll see you back next week.